Good morning, Covenant family. I grew up in a Baptist church, and one of the things we joked about was something I've since discovered is true of many church traditions, and that is the quality and quantity of food at a church potluck. Truthfully, we only half joked about it. Our potlucks were something that we took a special pride in. In high school, my friends and I, we would work to develop ways to maximize access to the best of what was served without being seen as taken too much. You know, it was kind of an art that we tried to develop. The church that I was at, you know, we had a lot of activity and a lot of programs. I would now argue that we had too many programs, but none of them had quite the same feel and sense of community as these potluck meals. There's something about coming together and eating together that can't get replicated in other environments and in other contexts. You know, by the time this video goes live, our morning gathering will already have included eating together around tables at the church. As we enjoy food and conversation, there's an element of community building that we don't get to enjoy most Sunday mornings. I'll reflect on that, um, the importance of community and the role that food and drink can play in that after this song. The song that I'm going to sing, it's from almost 60 years ago. It picks up on language that Jesus used to remind us of the importance of loving community, being a loving community, to what it means to be the church. Feel free to sing along if you're familiar with it and if you would like to. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes they'll know we are Christians by our we will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Oh, praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, His only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love, and they'll know Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. So as I think about uh, community, I think about kind of where we've come from. 
Uh, some of you have heard, heard terms like the Enlightenment and the Protestant Reformation. And one of the products of both the Enlightenment and the Protestant Reformation has been an emphasis on the individual. This has had some significant benefits, too many to mention them all. From a theological standpoint, the emphasis on, on God loving you and me as individuals and the invitation for us to respond personally to God's love and invitation to come into the life that, that God has longs for us to have, that's been incredibly important. The longer this emphasis on the individual has gone on, however, the more we seem to be losing some things as well. If the individual is the arbiter of all that is true, we can very quickly lack any sense of deeper truth or deeper reality. It can bring with it a sense of permission or even an expectation that everyone should try everything and experience everything as much as possible, at least, to see what fits for me as an individual. You know, the, the language of, of my truth is, is one that is that it, it, it's more than just my perspective on something for some people, that it is the absolute this emphasis on the individual can erase the idea of communities, of, of belonging and rootedness. These things can get lost as, and, and, and individuals can quickly move from being part of fixed social networks, even something as simple as a family, to becoming isolated beings who kind of flit from one loosely connected network to another to another. When you add into that our pervasive culture of consumerism, which suggests that the, the key to life is the accumulation of stuff, whether that's possessions or knowledge or experiences, we, we chase after things for ourselves. On top of all that, we're in the throes of a digital age where personal devices and social media, it increases isolation. It, it feeds the emphasis on us as the individual, as the center of everything. Of course, we're at the center of everything. From our perspective, that's the only place we can be. But it's becoming encouraged and all pervasive, or it has become that. As a Christian pastor, I, I, I'm aware of much of the potential good that exists with the digital age, with our ability to get the message of Jesus out through mess, through marketing platforms, with the encouragement for people to think and wrestle with what they've been taught. I'm, I'm aware of the benefit of the, the, the highlighting of the importance of a personal connection with God through Jesus. But I'm also very aware and increasingly aware of how the fruit of leaning all into those ideas leads to things that don't look like the way of Jesus as Jesus laid it out for us. You know, Jesus emphasized people coming together, not being apart. Paul emphasized barriers being broken down, even the strongest social barriers in his world. He, he talks about seeing this, this one family formed and actually living as a community. Because that is what Jesus is trying to build. I don't think it's coincidental that much of his time in the Gospels is spent sitting around tables, receiving or serving food. Whether he's asking one Samaritan woman for water, or creating a table that includes well over 5,000 people, Jesus seems to be focused on practices that bring people together, not splitting them apart. And food can help to offer that or create space for that. Think about the classic potluck meal for a moment. Rather than emphasizing any individual, it creates space for the communal. Rather than choosing and chasing what I want, we receive what we each bring. Rather than focusing on consumerism, it invites generosity and contribution. And rather than isolating the individual behind a screen, it encourages us to use both hands to eat, necessitating screens being put away and us seeing each other. There's space for God to work in that, to build his new family that simply can't happen on like with what we do on most Sunday mornings when people are seated in rows and only a handful of people are at the front. I would add that 
when we gather around a meal, it often highlights the offerings of those who are not highlighted within the most common church programs of our day. One of the challenges coming out of COVID is that the tendency that many of us have had towards the, the kind of individual focus, um, it's kind of a lot of a lot of us have been tempted to, to really double down on that and to, to, to really focus on kind of me and what I need in my, my connection with God. And pastorally, I've wrestled with how to talk about it. I know there are some very good reasons why some can't participate on Sunday mornings, whether it's any Sunday mornings or just some Sunday mornings. And that's why we've worked really hard to maintain our online presence. You know, we've, we've been live streaming for 10 months and offering these other reflections in the summer. I want to be really cautious that it doesn't become about trying to guilt people into being back in person or giving the impression that I have a goal of having a larger crowd on Sundays. That being said, I do worry about those whose connection with a Christian community has become primarily through a screen. You know, we're meant to live this life together, to live out all these one another's that Scripture talks about in relationship. And it isn't just those who gather with others who miss out. Those who do gather miss out on being shaped by and, and in relationship with those who aren't among us. We miss out on what others would bring to the table if they were here. This morning as we eat together, I pray that some who are here will enjoy a Jesus-centered community in a way that they have not yet experienced on Sunday morning. I'm reminded of why things like serving coffee and tea on a Sunday can make such a difference. It's got me thinking about if we should prayerfully consider how we could live and practice life together in ways that better help us live the unity that Jesus longs for us to have and to live the unity that Paul emphasized. The kind of unity that sharing a meal together can help us pursue. I hope you hear this with my heart and my intent. Um, I'll leave you with that as food for thought for you today. And I pray that even if it's not the larger gathering that, that, that happens on Sunday mornings, that, that you have a community around you with whom you can and do live out these one another's of the Bible, finding encouragement, support, love, even challenge as appropriate as you seek to follow the way of Jesus. As you go today, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. God bless. Go in peace today.